What is going on guys? Coach Joe, Office de la Swole. In this video, we are gonna be talking about the top supplements for building muscle slash performance. Now, do wanna say guys, if you take these supplements in a couple weeks, you're either gonna be one, in the Olympics, or two, the Olympia. Just kidding. In all seriousness guys, I'm gonna give you that quick disclaimer. I'm not a doctor here, so this is just going to be some information and Hopefully, it will help you along your journey of building muscle. The other caveat I do wanna say is everybody's body is different, so what I may say may not be applicable to you, but for the general population, these are some supplements that can help aid in your journey of performance, building muscle, health, etc. I also wanna add before we move forward that I technically define a supplement as something that does not have calories. So if it has calories, with an example of protein powder, I consider that a food. So I'm not gonna be talking about anything that has calories. And once again, these are over the counter. You can go into your Walmart, you can go into CVS, grocery store, whatever, pick this up and it is legal, I'm pretty sure. You're not gonna get in trouble by the popo for using some of these supplements. And if you're somebody like me who's a meathead or an athlete and you're gonna be doing this your entire life, it's your lifestyle, something you're passionate about, there can be some benefits with the supplements that I'm going to talk about. But what I'm talking about is not the magic pill by any means. I do look at it as the icing on the top of the cake. You wanna make sure that you have your training, your nutrition, healthy habits and a healthy lifestyle. And this can give you that one to 2% edge if done properly for the long haul. So let's kick it off with the first one. And this one is gonna be the most researched supplement I'm pretty sure on the market, and that's going to be creatine monohydrate. Guys, creatine's been around for forever. I remember when I took creatine when I was 13 or 14 years old, I thought it was actually a steroid. My parents thought it was a steroid. They wanted to make sure that my doctor thought it was okay and that I was gonna have all these adverse side effects. And what we found is really, this is a very safe supplement to take. Not only does it help with protein synthesis and building muscle increasing performance, it also can help with brain cognition and deficiencies in the brain, especially over a long period of time or as we age. So if you're somebody who's not taking creatine and you're training or you're an athlete and you wanna increase your performance, I highly recommend taking creatine daily. It's very simple, very easy, and very cheap. And it's something that you can run for a very long period of time or take a break when you want. Uh, but nonetheless, it has proven benefits. It's backed by a heavy amount of research and it will definitely give you a slight boost and aid in performance uh, throughout your entire training career. The second supplement on my list is gonna be zinc, okay? Zinc is one of the supplements that can help with building muscle, uh, tissue repair, and also hormone production. We often see too, when people get older, if they have a zinc deficiency, they develop sarcopenia, which is typically like a muscle wasting uh, condition or loss of skeletal muscle and muscle mass. The third supplement on my list is gonna be chromium. Now chromium is very interesting and it's found in food and obviously you can use it as a supplement, which is why we're talking about it, but it can help regulate blood sugar levels and how the body uses insulin. Now, if you're somebody who is a strength sport athlete or a bodybuilder or concerned with performance, being sensitive to insulin is a very important thing, okay? The more sensitive we are to insulin, the better the body can respond to the carbohydrates we're consuming and using that fuel for performance and building muscle. If that's out of whack, right, and our blood sugar isn't where it should be, or we are insulin resistant, we can develop things like diabetes and it can definitely affect our body composition and really our health in general. So chromium is one of those supplements that is kind of in the background, but can have a tremendous impact on your performance and how your body is using the fuel to help aid in performance and building muscle. The next supplement on my list is gonna be vitamin B6. Now, B6 is very important for overall performance, but even more so for muscle health, metabolic processes, and immunity, okay? So if we are deficient in B6, not only can we have issues with building muscle, right? Uh, issues with our performance, but our immunity. And if we're sick, obviously we're not gonna be able to train and get the results we want long-term. So increasing that immunity is going to be very crucial. Now, there are a lot of different foods that you can consume that have vitamin B6 and that's with a well-rounded diet. However, most of us probably will be a little bit deficient depending on what we eat. So 
Once again, just a safety net to get your vitamin B6 supplement in to make sure that everything is working as it should be and you can perform the best and grow the muscle tissue and not be sick. Now the next supplement on my list is going to be caffeine. Now caffeine obviously is a stimulant. It's gonna increase your heart rate. It's gonna produce more blood flow, et cetera. And whether or not you can tolerate or you like caffeine is totally up to you. However, I find using caffeine when I need it to be effective. So I'm not a large consumer of caffeine much anymore, but when I do use it, it's for a specific purpose where I do want that more uh, awareness, I want more focus, and I'll use it for either a prep competition or a certain training block where I need just that heightened state of awareness uh, and almost arousal. So do with it what you will with caffeine. Uh, it doesn't necessarily, in my mind, have to be good or bad. It's just what do we want our desired outcome to be and would caffeine be the proper supplement to take for that desired outcome. The next supplement on my list is gonna be magnesium, okay? So magnesium is one of those supplements that typically I take at night and that is due to its relaxation and recovery-like properties and traits. So you'll see a lot of people who take ZMA, right, at nighttime. One, that's because you're going to bed. It's gonna help relax and it's gonna help that recovery process start while you're sleeping. And obviously, sleep is very important. So if you are somebody who struggles with sleep, magnesium may be a nice supplement to take before bed and allow that recovery process to happen throughout the night. So that is why I primarily would take it. But overall, it's just gonna be aiding in a little bit of relaxation and recovery properties. Moving on, another supplement that's great to take for a multitude of purposes is gonna be your vitamin C. Now, one of the things I love about vitamin C is not only is it gonna help with your immune system, which is huge, once again, if we're sick, we can't train, we're not gonna be able to make the progress as fast as we could, and when we are in a state of sickness, it really does negate and diminish any sort of building properties and anabolism in the body. Outside of that, it does help reduce oxidative stress, which is great and kind of puts our body in a state of growth. So making sure that we are healthy and our immune system is where it needs to be, that is gonna help with the process of protein synthesis and building muscle. Having adequate amount of vitamin C also helps form collagen and collagen is the glue that helps strengthen connective tissue, tendons, and ligaments in the body. The last benefit of vitamin C is it can help with managing cortisol levels. Now we do want some degree of inflammation caused by the increase in cortisol in our body. However, we don't want so much that we're not able to grow because we're in such an inflammatory state. So you gotta find that happy medium and vitamin C can help you be in a healthy range that allows not only the proper amount of cortisol that you need, but also not too much uh, which kind of destroys that building an anabolic environment inside of our body. Now getting close to the end, another supplement that I wanna talk about is essential amino acids. And I've actually made a whole video about them, which you can click right here. Uh, but once again, this is a safety net. So if you guys do have a very well-rounded and constructed diet, you may not need essential amino acids, but if there is something that you are lacking, it may be of your interest to get some sort of essential amino acids that you can take at some point during the day to kind of once again, give you that safety net and making sure that we have all the essential amino acids that are required to build muscle tissue. The last supplement that I wanna talk about, guys, is gonna be beta alanine. Some people love it, some people hate it, and the main reason why is it's heavily used in pre-workouts and it is the ingredient that makes your face itch or tingle. So if you're into that kind of thing, you probably will like it, and if not, you don't need to use it. But beta alanine is an amino acid that helps produce muscle performance by increasing the amount of carnosine in the body. Now carnosine is an antioxidant, but what it does is it's gonna help kind of keep your work capacity up. So it's gonna delay the muscle fatigue that you have, which then in turn is gonna allow you to perform more for longer, which is a benefit, especially when it comes to training. So just to summarize this whole thing, guys, these, like I said, are going to be the icing on the cake. You have to make sure that you have your training, your nutrition, your lifestyle and habits all in check and in line with the goals that you have. If you don't, these supplements probably aren't gonna do much, but if you have that in check and you notice some deficiencies and you do want that extra little boost, these supplements can definitely help if used in conjunction with everything that I mentioned for the long haul. Also, if you're getting some blood work or you're talking to your doctor and you do notice that there are deficiencies in these areas, these are supplements that can definitely help for overall health and performance and training towards your goals in the gym. I typically try not to think too much about it. Obviously, I have a good nutrition protocol in place along with my training, but adding a couple of these in, which are typically found in a lot of your pre-workouts or your multivitamins, 
kind of have you covered. You don't have to spend a ton of money. So don't get stuck in that thought process when you see stuff on Instagram or social media or the people that you follow who are charging a ton for these products because typically you can get away with the basics and they work and they're not super expensive. So don't overcomplicate it. So there you guys have it. Hopefully you liked the video. If you do, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. And once again, supplements are not the end all be all, but I do think they have a time and a place that can help aid in your training goals and progress, especially if you're in it for the long haul and you're looking at it from a holistic approach. But that's all we have, guys. Stay a lean, mean, strength, health machine. I'll catch up with you next time. Peace.